We've been exploring the phenomenon of remote viewing, the supposed ability of psychics to obtain information from locations either hidden from them or at great distances. We've seen these remote viewers' apparent ability to receive the details of a photograph hidden in a sealed envelope. But to make our own determination of the accuracy of remote viewing, two of Dr. Wayne Carr's more successful viewers have agreed to a controlled test. We've sealed a target in an envelope like this. No one has any idea what picture we've chosen. Let's see how well our remote viewers do. Tonight we have a uh, special remote viewing demonstration. Remote viewer Mark Hall is joined by Beverly Marcotte. Beverly's target contact success rate is considered one of the best in the field. The sealed target sits on this podium for nearly an hour. The two viewers draw and write, then signal when they are finished. Dr. Carr wanted us to make it clear that my very presence as a skeptic administering the test could create a dampening effect on target contact. Before I reveal the target, the remote viewers summarize what they saw. I saw a structure that it was cylindrical along and almost like, I almost had a feeling like there was like this turning motion, almost um, possibly one structure moving inside of another. I deducted something like a Ferris wheel. Well, I saw it was either like a caisson or a horse-drawn carriage or something. I thought maybe somebody passed away or maybe it symbolized a, a crossing because it was going over a river. The target is still sealed. Before it's open, Dr. Carr looks through both Mark and Beverly's drawings and sums up what they remote viewed. She deducted a Chinese wall, rocket, oil drum, cement mixer, a deduction of Teddy Roosevelt, a fan tail jet engine, and again, he's got some kind of conveyance. It could be a carriage, an automobile. Well, you. You've thrown out about 30 or 40 different things, so it seems like almost no matter what it is, you can say, well, number 17 is the one that I said it was, so there it is. So <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of all this, other than when I selected the target, um, I purposely chose something that wasn't a box or a circle, because that's what you guys always draw, mm -hmm. box, boxes and circles. You said on your webpage that you've uh, remote-viewed galaxies, so I have the most famous picture ever taken of galaxies. Uh, and here it is, and that was the target. The photo is a shot taken by the Hubble Space Telescope in Earth orbit. Well, this is an intriguing target, and it's certainly not the most easy target because it is, certainly puts you in an area where you really don't recognize what's going on. Dr. Carr utilizes Mark and Beverly's notes and sketches to argue that the results are a success. Here is uh, Beverly's first sketch here. She's got something, she's got circles, and, uh, and some arrow is going in a rotating motion. So to me, and I think to most people, that this is um, basically uh, describing something that's in motion in a circular motion. So what is a galaxy? It's something in a circular motion. So is this above chance? Yes. No, no, no. Okay. Only if you tell us ahead of time it's a galaxy. Then I would be impressed. What only, about this one? This if one there are only like four drawing. sketches. Well, how come you want to throw that one away? This is a nice drawing. Okay. It doesn't look at all like a Hubble telescope or a galaxy. I, okay, okay, I so give I you that. But, data if it's, but if one of the four sketches describes something in a circular motion, that's pretty much above chance. Mark has probably about six sketches one of his sketches, he has, again, a circular structure, and he calls it a whirlpool of energy. So is Dr. Carr being generous? Perhaps. But one could interpret one of Beverly's impressions as the Hubble Space Telescope. It was cylindrical along, and almost like, I almost had a feeling like there was like this turning motion, almost um, possibly one structure moving inside of another. You really can't uh, judge remote viewing on the basis of uh, one demonstration alone or the results of one or two viewers, because uh, this is a thing that comes and goes. It's not a 100% deal, and any uh, researcher and remote viewer knows that. So what did our controlled test of remote viewing teach us? The accuracy of the phenomenon is at best subjective. But for those who choose to believe, remote viewing is an untapped ability we all possess.